Since before the words scientist or science existed, scientists of all kinds have been trying to play God. And one way in which they do that is by breeding animals who should never be bred to try and create something new. These are hybrid animals created by scientists. Number 15. Rakelhahn the Rakelhahn is a truly amazing bird that you would be extremely lucky to ever see in the wild. It is a mixture of the western capercaillie and the black grouse. The western capercaillie is a common bird throughout Europe and is known to be the largest of all grouse species, as well as being remarkable for the huge size of the males, which have amazing black, green, and brown plumage and are twice the size of the females. The black grouse is another cool-looking game bird, not quite as large, but still pretty big. When scientists mixed these two birds, they ended up with the Rakelhan, which is a massive and awesome-looking bird. The only problem is that it has the personality of Ed Kemper. Like, this bird is a psychopath and insanely aggressive to anything, including people. But worse than that, there are videos of this bird going on killing sprees, attacking and beheading a male black grouse, which might have been its dad. And then, shall we say, having its way with the corpse, which seems a little excessive. The good news is that the Rakelhan is unable to reproduce, so hopefully these psycho killer birds will not take over the world anytime soon. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the juicy topic. We've saved this one for our juicy topic, as it's a rather special case. This isn't a hybrid animal that has been created by science. This is a hybrid animal that, if rumors are to be believed, scientists are planning to try and make. Said creature would be dubbed a zebron and is the result of the ungodly breeding of a rhino and a zebra. Quite why scientists want to do this, we don't really know, but hey, we're sure they have their reasons. Let's just hope these are the kind of scientists who are doing things for good and not evil. As always, comment down below with the hashtag JuicyTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. Number 14. Zubron Here's a bovine hybrid you might not have heard of. The Zubron, it's a mixture of a domestic cow and a European bison, which is also known as a wizen. This animal was first bred in Poland and was named back in the 1960s. They are very heavy animals which can weigh as much as 2,600 pounds and are considered to be the relatives of the American beefalo. That's right, I said beefalo, not buffalo. The Zubron is a sought-after cattle because they are highly resistant to diseases and can tolerate harsh weather conditions with ease. It was first bred as an experiment back in 1847 by Leopold Walicki of Poland. Scientists believed for a long time that the Zubron could completely replace the domestic cattle worldwide. Imagine heading out for a Zubron burger or getting into some tasty Zubron jerky. The Polish Academy of scientists continued its experiments with the Zubron throughout the 20th century, but the Zubron didn't really catch on in the way they had hoped. But there's still hope that one day everyone will have tried a Zubron Big Mac at least once. Number 13. Geep Geep, that's a goat and a sheep in case you couldn't figure that one out. These two animals have been living together for longer than recorded history, and yet interbreeding between them is very rare. They are in a different genus, but are from the same family, Capernae. Goats and sheep are a little too different to one another to produce any healthy offspring, so most geeps are stillborn. But there are records of some geep which have survived and even grown up. Back in 2000, a baby geep was born healthy and grew up with legs like a goat and the body of a sheep. It also had a woolly inner coat 
throat like a sheep and a coarse outer one like a goat. It was also known to have an overactive libido going after any female goat or sheep it could find. At my petting zoo in Scottsdale, Arizona, a baby geep named Butterfly was born in 2014. It became a star attraction, although hopefully not for its Casanova-style behavior. Number 12. Penny. What do you get if you cross a male horse and a female donkey? The answer is a henny. The smart ones of you watching might be saying, Hey, wait a minute, isn't that just a plain old mule? The answer is no. Because a mule is a male donkey bred with a female horse and is a much more common hybrid. Also, the genetic imprint means that mules and hennies are very different to each other. Hennies are smaller and have more donkey-like temperaments, generally more relaxed and slow-moving, but also pretty stubborn. But mules are more courageous, energetic, and agile, like a horse. In fact, they both have important jobs in different circumstances. A hinny is ideal as a pack mount, while a mule is perfect for riding out on the trail. Hinnies are notorious for their stubbornness, but both mules and hinnies can be pretty stubborn, so prepare for some negotiation. This is actually because they are very smart and able to read a situation, and they won't let you drag them into doing something risky or dangerous for no good reason. Number 11. Wolfen. Now we have the Wolfen, which sounds pretty weird, that's for sure. It is the offspring of a bottlenose dolphin and a false killer whale, and Wolfens are actually something which occurs in nature, although very rarely. False killer whales are about halfway between a dolphin and a killer whale in size, with a skull and teeth much more similar to the killer whale. They can grow to 20 feet long and will hang out with all kinds of different species, and the males like to hit on pretty much any female they can find, no matter what species. So that's how this sometimes happens in the wild. Wolfen can reach 12 to 22 feet in length and around 600 pounds of weight. And while bottlenose dolphin has 88 teeth, false killer whale 44 teeth, the wolfen has 66 teeth, which is an average of the two parents. In captivity, the first wolfen known of is Kikaimalu, who was born in 1985. They tend to inherit more characteristics from the dolphin side, but will still be much larger. Aside from Kikaimalu, the only other captive wolfin is her daughter, Kawi Kai. Number 10. Groller Bear if we go back just a few short years, there was a huge space between the habitats of grizzly bears and polar bears. They each had their own patch and were pretty unlikely to ever meet. But now, as the polar ice caps melt, polar bears have begun moving south and they have begun to cross over for the first time. What does this mean? Maybe a lot of fights, but a little loving too and the birth of some groller bears. The internet has been trying to figure out who would win in a fight between a polar bear and a grizzly in a fight, but the answer is that everyone wins when they decide to snuggle instead. Some people also like calling them pizzly bears, which is pretty hilarious. The first ever groller was observed in 2006, and while only three more cases have been officially recorded, scientists believe they can make more of these hybrids and add a new bear species to the world. So next time your trash gets destroyed, you can tell everyone it was by a pizzly. Oh, I, I mean a, a groller bear. Number 9. Beefalo. Yep, we mentioned it earlier and now it's time to take a look at the mighty beefalo. This has to be the champion of the most awesome name for a hybrid animal competition. Who wouldn't want to meet a beefalo? It's a hybrid of an American buffalo and a domestic cow. This mix was first created by accident back in the 18th century. But it soon dawned on people that the beefalo's super hardy nature, added to regular cattle, would make the beefalo a very useful species for farming, especially as buffalo are less hungry than domestic cattle, too. Oh my goodness. The meat is even considered to be better, so this species is set to increase in numbers as more people wake up to the benefits of the beefalo. They can weigh as much as 2,000 pounds and usually have fine and dark-colored hair. While they are known to be docile and very tolerant to diseases, unlike domestic animals, the ideal mix is actually about two-thirds cattle and one-third buffalo. So it takes a little math to get the mix right, since you can't really have three parents. Number 8. Koi Wolf 
The koi wolf is a mixture of the coyote and the wolf. Personally, I would have called it the woyote or the kolf. But what do I know? The first koi wolf appeared in southern Ontario at the beginning of the 20th century, but it was not described until 1969, as people initially just thought it was a big coyote. Now they live in northeastern parts of the USA and southeastern parts of Canada. They can grow to 5 feet in length and weigh as much as 45 pounds. The coat is thick like a wolf and the colors can come from either parents, but the size of the skull and jaws definitely comes from the wolf side as they are large and powerful, much more than a regular coyote. As you might imagine, the koi wolf is a carnivore and it likes to eat the same stuff as coyotes and wolves, such as voles, mice, rabbits, woodchucks, white-tailed deer, geese, ducklings, and carrion. It will also sometimes eat berries and nuts as a little dessert after your heavy lunch of ducklings and carrion. They also hunt and live in packs just like wolves, but different to coyotes who are solitary animals. They are fertile and reproduce easily, and have a range of calls which include the howl of a wolf and the yip of a coyote. Number 7. Liger what happens when you put a male lion and a female tiger in a cage together? Well, in all likelihood, they will immediately try and kill each other, with the smart money on the tigress to do the most damage. But what if you raised them together from cubs so they knew each other and even liked each other a little bit? Well, then things might be a little more amorous, and you could end up with a lion-tiger hybrid called a liger. The liger only exists in captivity today, since the habitats of these big cats do not overlap in the wild anymore. Ligers are amazing because they are absolutely huge, way bigger than regular lions and tigers. In fact, they are the largest cats in the entire world. The biggest healthy liger was named Hercules, and back in 2013, he weighed an enormous 922 pounds. That's a lot of cat. Ligers are extremely rare, as they only live in zoos, and it's estimated that there are fewer than 100 of them in the world. Around 30 of those are in the US, while China has another 20. If you live in one of those countries, take the opportunity to go and see one of these amazing hybrid animals. Number 6. Kama The Kama is a camel crossed with a llama. To be more specific, it's a male dromedary camel, that's the kind with one hump, and a female llama. The first Kama ever born was in 1998. The idea was to create animals capable of higher wool production than the llama, with the size and strength of a camel and more chilled temperament. Of course, llamas and camels don't live anywhere near each other, and in fact, they have been separated as a species for more than 30 million years, so it's considered something of a miracle that you can simply breed them together and produce healthy Kama with no problems. However, there are some challenges, not least that male dromedaries are about six times the size of female llamas. That's going to be a little uncomfortable for Miss Llama. So the whole process has to take place via artificial insemination. Too bad for Mr. Camel, I guess. The Camel can weigh as much as a thousand pounds and stand 55 inches tall at the shoulder. They don't have the hump and they have a shorter fleece than the llama, but they are able to drink huge amounts of water and survive a long time in the desert. Number 5. Zonkey A zonkey is the hybrid offspring of a zebra stallion and a donkey jenny. These animals have been bred since the 19th century, and even Charles Darwin made note of them in his works. However, zonkeys are extremely rare, even though the zebra and donkey are actually very close relatives. There may be some of you out there who have visited Mexico and are about to write something furious in the comments about how they were everywhere on your two-week vacay in Tijuana, but I'm gonna let you in on a little Mexican secret. They paint the stripes on the donkeys to make them look that way. Not a real zonkey, guys. However, in South Africa, they do sometimes occur, as there are quite a a lot of zebra and donkeys in the country. Zonkeys are sterile, like mules, due to having an odd number of chromosomes. Number 4. Savanna Cat the savanna cat is a pretty special cat with a unique set of traits acquired from its hybridization. These are achieved by crossing a wild African serval with a domestic Siamese cat. 
and this mix has created the appearance of a true wildcat with the temperament of a domestic cat. Although I've met some old ladies with cats that are totally the other way around. In any case, the first ever Savannah cat kitten was named Savannah, and she ended up giving her name to the entire breed. And soon enough, the Savannah cat was officially recognized by the International Cat Association, which happened in 2001. They are of a striking appearance, said to be both majestic and dignified. They can look a little like a cheetah, and have long legs with spotted markings on a gold coat, which makes them instantly recognizable. They also have huge ears, which should scare off any other animals who might be thinking of digging up your yard. Some people say savannah cats have a dog-like temperament, and they often follow their owners around the house and like to be petted. They need to be socialized early though, as these animals can be wary and they are also pretty darn strong. Number 3. Zoe A Zoe is a mixture of a cow and a yak. Why is it called a Zoe? Well, have you thought about trying to market something called a yow or a kek? This bovid is rare, but it often is used as a farm animal in Tibet and Mongolia. They are known to be a strong animal that produces a lot of milk and meat, but the upside is that they don't eat any more than a regular yak or cow, so they are high in efficiency for farming. Nowadays, there are other Asian countries who are beginning to adopt this Tibetan and Mongolian specialty. They can weigh around 1,300 pounds and stand 5.5 feet tall. And they have the long and shaggy coat, which is typical of a yak, but they have a face like a cow, as well as horns. The males are sterile, but the females can be bred with male cattle or yaks to make another generation that's a little more cow-like or a little more yakky. They are super strong and often used to haul loads of up to 300 pounds for people hoping to climb Mount Everest, as well as being more agile and better than either of their parents at high altitudes. Number 2. Tigon we had the liger, now it's time for the tigon. This is the offspring of a male tiger and a female lion. This is a cross which could have occurred in nature, at least once upon a time when lions and tigers lived in the same parts of Asia. These cats are from the same genus, there is no problem with them reproducing. However, being of a different species, it will mean that the baby tigon might not be able to reproduce itself so easily. This means tigons are very rare and only live in captivity. They have both spots from the mother lions have the genes for spots, and sometimes they are faintly visible on some lions, and stripes from the father. The mane is sometimes visible, but it will be shorter and less noticeable than a lion's mane, and is usually more like the ruff of a male tiger. Some people think that tigons are much smaller than their parents, but this is not true. They are not as big as ligers, but they can grow as large as their parents and weigh as much as 400 pounds. So if you were thinking of having one as a pet, eh, not a great idea. Number 1. Buckfast Bee the Buckfast Bee sounds a little like something Scottish people love to drink, but in fact it is a kind of hybrid bee which was made by the Buckfast Abbey in Devon, England. It was created by Brother Adam, born Carl Curl, in 1898 in Germany, in 1919 when he was in charge of beekeeping of the Abbey. He was very interested in mixing many different strains of bees to create new kinds of bees, which is a little weird since Christian monks back then usually didn't believe in evolution, which is exactly what hybridization is, with a helping hand from us humans. Anyway, back in the early 20th century, bee populations were being decimated by tracheal mites, which were an acarine parasitic mite that invaded the bee's tracheal tubes and shortened their lives and it was especially problematic in the British Isles. Brother Adam understood the bees needed to evolve to survive, so he imported some Italian bees and began breeding them until a new bee was developed which was not susceptible to the mites. And that's what is today known as the Buckfast Bee. Which two animals would you like to hybridize? Which would you like to see a human-animal hybrid one day? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.